you create the condition of the gravitational field of the planet which is providing more field forces for the carbon balance to be in operation that the nitrogen itself becomes irrelevant. Now, every element of the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen is there to feed, so the plant grows faster. So, the plants use the energy of the environment and at the same time use the magnetical gravitational fields of the environment for their growth, for their energy. And as we've discovered with the human body, uh, we, as the human body, we are only interacting with the fields from our food. So, we, we have the same situation with the plants, that the plants are not absorbing any matter state from the, the soils or the environment they only interact with the fields now this is quite a hard concept to understand for a lot of people because we are so used to throwing compost and fertilizer into our soil and we thinking this is what is making the plants grow so to try and understand that statement that the plants are only using their the fields around them for their energy um, we have to look at um, that statement in relation to this tree. Now, this particular tree is of a hundred years old and has been living in that same spot all this time. So it's that same patch of soil. And you'd think by now that maybe this tree has used up all the nutrients that were in that soil at the time because it's used up all those nutrients around its roots and yes the roots have grown and they've moved sideways in the soil but you know 100 years is a long time so surely it would have used up all the nutrients and we do have leaves falling down creating a bit of a compost base that that could uh, nourish the soils again you know, but in this example and many other examples, there's a road paves over a lot of the, its roots area. So how can we really explain the growth of this tree and many others like her, which are even older, um, where they're only just sitting in one spot in that soil, if they're only taking the matter, uh, using the matter from the soil, the nutrients from the soil. So where is she getting her nutrients or where is she getting her energy from? That's the question. So the vertical people are obtaining the majority of their nutritional needs, or we call energy, from the fields all around them. The needs of this old tree, as we've said, will be very different to the needs of a quick growing crop like a lettuce, but essentially they're all the same. And we've got to look at every leaf, every branch is interacting with the fields. So it's just one huge reactor that's, that's interacting with these fields around us. So we're going to look a little bit closer at, at how the plants connect to these fields, how they interact with their environment. And as we've said, plants have a magnetical and gravitational field and each plant uh, will have a different field strength. So if you've looked in your garden and, and around, you'll see that each plant species has different shapes of leaves, the arrangements on their branches, the size, they're all different. And all of these produce different magrat fields for the plants. So when we have a look at um, 
picture on the left there, we're looking at parsley. Look at the leaves, shape of the leaves there. You look at the passion fruit. So every plant, the leaf is structured differently. When one looks at the, the way that the leaves are arranged on the stems, you can see on the left that uh, some of the leaves are they arranged opposite each other. Uh, there's world arrangements where they all just rotate sort of around each other. And then on some branches, the leaves are alternate. And each one of these configurations creates different feels. Even when one looks um, very closely at the edges of all the leaves, each and every edge or point on the leaf is, uh, is interacting with the fields. So even down to its minute detail of the plant, um, every point is then interacting with the fields around it. So the plants have really learned to um, adapt and use its environment. On these other plants, you can look, these are, are thicker leaves. They are simpler leaves from a cacti, um, able to survive with, with very little water because essentially they're using the fields from the environment to create the water that they need within their plant, within their, their leaf structure. So we look at the different arrangements of the leaves and the shapes, all create different uh, magra fields and these all interact differently with the fields around the plants. We even have to look at the different height of the plants. You get sh ground covers or shrubs that are very low to the ground interacting with earth's uh, fields there. You get your taller shrubs to the very tall trees and each level is, is all interacting with the fields on a different um, basis and each one is creating its own um, different magnetical gravitational field. And just coming back to why we have that variety of, you know, when you go and walk in a forest, you have all these varieties of, of plants around you and you are interacting with those fields of plants. So you enter interacting with different fields from the different plants all the time. And so it's very different if you go and walk through a corn a field of just corn, you're not getting that same effect is because you are only interacting with one type of uh, field strength there is from, from your corn plant. Whereas in your forest, you've got 50, 100 different varieties, uh, all with different strengths. So each plant, according to its height, shape, its leaf arrangements, the color, thickness, all create different um, magnetic field strengths of that plant. And then they're able to attract and create from the environment the fields of the elements that they need for their energy for them to live. So now we can come on back to the picture of, of the beautiful tree there. And I really now understand that that whole area that you see, it's a massive, massive area, is one huge reactor. It's interacting with the fields around it. And we have to try and look a bit deeper into this, this field flow that we see around the plants because the bottom leaves, um, you often see on, on a lot of plants, the bottom leaves cool down and feed back this energy to the root area. The upper leaves are receiving new energies from the environment and also feed these back down to the root area. So we have a flow of energy from the top to the bottom and constantly flowing. And we also have the roots receiving fields from the earth and from the soil. So we have this huge interaction. We don't see it this flow of energy um, because we only see the tree itself, but there is this huge flow of energy and in interacting with the fields around them. And we see that everywhere. Um, 
the same as the fields on our planet. Um, so the flow of this energy is in every structure. It's in the rocks, the bacteria, the cells, the animals, plants. It's everything that we see. We see this flow of, of, of the energy. So well, from this, we can say that the plants are receiving a very small part of their energy in the fields from the ground. But the majority of the energy that they use and need is from the environment above the soil. Um, and that's where all you have the leaves interacting with the fields from the environment. You have huge reactors um, interacting from the environment there. And the same idea and structure of the field flow can be equated to, we've got to look at the fruit of the plants on exactly the same basis. Um, so from your apple to your peach, to your beetroot, to your pineapple, your pumpkin, it's the same that you get this nice flow of energy constantly flowing with the environment, interacting with the environment all the time. And as a, a leading to um, next week's uh, topic where we're going to be talking about the production of CO2 gains, I'd like a lot of you to go outside and have a look at the plants, but specifically go and have a look at um, the leaf structure of the plant, um, because you'll notice um, that the, the one side of the plant is, is very shiny and then underneath it's sort of a very matte surface. And begin to understand that the leaf is, is also made of different layers. And just as Dr. Redudo explained in the body, there's a reason for all those layers to interact with the fields. And so we will explain this in further detail when we look at the whole method of, of CO2 production in next week's uh, workshop. So to summarize, the plants are living reactors and the plants are very advanced beings in using the fields to obtain their energy. And they are essentially using 100% of the, the energy from the fields. They are not having to kill that we, what we do to obtain additional energy. And the plants have understood their environment. They've become masters of their environment. And there is this constant field flow, which we don't see, but that's how everything is interacting with everything else. Mm -hmm.